All right, sup guys? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Trice Too Easy. We're gonna go ahead and get into the small NBA slate. We got five incredibly hard to cap games. Uh, we'll look at the charts, the matchups, the trends, the discrepancies, the data, the mismatches. Hopefully, find an edge. Hopefully, crack these folks. Guys, if you would like to join my sports community and Discord server, it's in the pinned comment and in the description of the video. Ten bucks a month. It's just a community. We have fun. We talk sports. We share slips. We crack folks. And if you want exclusive access to viewer perks and tools I use daily, like Smart Stake and Outlier, the two best tools there are, they're in the pinned comment and in the description of the videos as well. Okay, we'll get right into it, guys. Review yesterday, bad beat, big winner. Props, look at where the uh, sharp money is putting their bucks at with the Smart Stake Smart Money tool. Then we'll get into the slate, lock in, dissect it, and crack these folks. To review yesterday, four wins, three losses. That heat should be an X. Very, very frustrating night because I started cash the Cavs, cash the Nuggets, cash the Spurs. Um, Hornets, fine, cash the Nets. Then the Pistons in the heat. It's like every night where I start off hot, I, I just keep not getting that big like night or bringing the brooms out and just sweeping the slate. It's like I either start off bad and win all the night games or I win all the early games and lose all the night games. And I'm like one bet positive. I just ain't been able to get that monster like six and one, seven and oh. You know what I mean? Like I thought, hey, I'm about to sweep it tonight. Pistons, what are we doing? Heat, what are we doing? Like ah, frustrating, frustrating. I was okay with the Hornets loss, but but the Pistons in the heat, I really like them spots. Anyways, what can you do? As far as the bad beat from yesterday, guys, this was posted by Skip3000 in the Discord. Pistons, plus 2,293 odds, cast everything, and the Pistons just couldn't do right by him. Brutal. Absolutely brutal. I, I, I don't know. They're good. They're just, like, inconsistent or something. I don't know. Uh, like... But they're not. They still win a lot. I don't know. The Pistons are kind of frustrating, especially lately. Uh, as far as the big winner, this was posted by... There were a lot of big winners yesterday. This was posted by Smooth Q in the Discord. Nice little slip. Uh, he had a bonus bet for 25 bucks, turned it into 120 He basically made 100 bucks plus 481 Took them Clippers a big plus money. Good read. Then he took the Spurs with De'Aaron Fox for a dub. Nice slip, man. Very solid. Easy slip. Why not? 25 bucks to 100. Who wouldn't take it? Congratulations. Nice win. Okay. Couple props I'm eyeballing today, guys. Go ahead and get into those. First one. LeBron James. Points, rebounds, and assists under 37 and a half. Uh, he been kind of ass. He's not really hooping. This is done this season. He has not gone over this once. Uh, best game was versus the Clippers, and they're gambling. Now he's versus the Raptors. Now, the only thing I, I worry about, historically versus the Raptors, he murders his team. 43 and 45. Like, for whatever reason, he just shows out every time he sees the Raptors. So a little bit worried here. But this season, he's just not really doing anything. I, I think he's just old, guys. It's sad sad as it is to see. He's just aging. He just, he just doesn't seem to have it like he did. And I don't think, I think this line is way too high. Um, other books are moving. The lines are moving down. It's a good sign. I'm going to be on LeBron under 37 and a half PRA. I would look that way next CJ McCollum under 26 and a half PRA. I would also look his way. Pinnacle, the sharp book is dropping down. Fandle's still up. I'll be surprised if they all don't move down and catch up. Pinnacle dropped all the way down to minus 135 early. Um, he's versus the Celtics. Celtics are the best defense. They're going to lock his ass up. I just don't think he'll be able to do anything head to head versus the Celtics two guys. 100% hit rate, 22, 20, and 8 last time he saw him. He just doesn't do well versus them. Their defense is unbelievable, and he's only he's only hit it six times out of 20 this season in the first place. He's always capable of a monster 50 or 35, you know, PRA game, but I, I think tonight he's going to struggle. So I would look his way. This is outlier, guys. This is where I get the charts and the player prop data from. Next, go ahead, get in a smart stake. Look at their smart money tool and see where the big dogs are putting their money. These are the guys who are banned on FanDuel, Hard Rock, uh, BetMGM, DraftKings, so they use exchanges. This is where most of the capital for the sharp betters is going today. First one, Laurie McCannon, under six and a half boards. I'm not comfortable fading big Laurie. I'm just absolutely not, especially not versus the Nets. But uh, at plus money, they think he's going under. Derek White, under six and a half assists. I don't hate that, but it's versus the Wizards, so do I hate it? Cam Whitmore, over one and a half threes. Love it. At plus 185, love this play. Would consider throwing that on a lotto. Next, Joseph Nurkic, under three and a half assists. Plus 145, kind of like this as well. 
And then lastly, Austin Reeves under seven and a half assists at 1.3K. Love that play. I really love Austin Reeves, and I like Cam Whitmore over the threes. Uh, they got a lot of plus money on here today. The Sharps are gambling. All right, guys. Anyways, enough of the fun. Enough of the small talk. It's time to get serious. Break down these games. Break down this slate. Get an absolute bag. And crack these folks. First game. Warriors, 76ers. Massive discrepancies for the 76ers, believe it or not, defense versus the Warriors offense. Uh, field goal shooting has been really bad for the Warriors. The three-point shooting has actually been pretty terrible, too. Points in the paint offense has been pretty ass as well. I honestly can't believe they're a 500 team. Just uh, being frank, I really can't believe it. Now, on the flip side with these 76ers, their offense versus the Warriors defense. Once again, you have defensive advantages on both sides. I would love to get to the under, but 223 is low as shit. Uh, that's a very low ask. I couldn't get there. Looking at the chart, they started at around, I mean, if you really it started around minus 116-ish, dropped down to 130. But then this morning, they've shot all the way up to plus 100. That's what got me there, guys. I'm going to be on the Warriors plus three and a half. It's, it's not that I necessarily like to play. It's just going with the money in the chart. You were way down here at 118, 130. You wake up today on game day where big money starts firing bets off and you shoot all the way up to plus 100. That's enough for me to get on the Warriors. I, I, I think it corrected itself. I, I think they were wrong having it this low. Clearly, it corrected today. That means massive, like massive money came on the Warriors this morning to push it down and push this line up. So because of that, it's game day. Sharp money's coming in. Give me the Warriors plus three and a half, and that's the only reason why is the chart and the money. Next game, because really, I think these two teams are dead even. Uh, next game, Celtics versus the Wizards. Tough. Uh, it's tough. 10 is a lot to ask um, for a Celtics team that can't really score. They don't shoot the ball well. They're 20th in scoring. The problem is the Wizards defense is fucking 30th. It's terrible. It's atrocious. Ugh. Uh, Celtics defense is number two. So Lord knows, I don't think these Wizards are going to score anything. A lot of their stars, like you just saw the CJ McCollum's under getting pushed down by the sharp books. Um, a lot of the star players lines are low as shit. 24 and a half for a star. Uh, I, I just, I don't think these Wizards have a chance today. I'm going to go ahead and lay the points with the Celtics. Just the massive defensive advantage everywhere. And then small offensive advantages I think will add up. You know, they win three to five points a quarter. You could see them winning by 15, 20 by the end of the game. Wouldn't be surprised. And frankly, I think the Celtics are kind of playing out of their mind right now. Uh, line stayed stagnant. Just give me the Celtics laying the points. Next game. Jazz, Nets, what to do here? Battle of the bums. This is two very even teams, two teams who are bad and ass. They are ass. They are ass. They're terrible. But they've both been paying us really well, covering spreads, competing versus good teams, paying us almost every time we bet them. Guys, I love the Jazz. You know that. I've been a fan of them the whole season. I was a fan of them last season. Think they're the most improved team. That said, these Nets lately have paid me literally every single time I've bet them. They just continue to cover the spreads, continue to cash me. I literally, I, I would be, it would be dead wrong to go and fade the team who's done right by me. How can I? As much as I'd love to bet the Jazz here, I can't. The Nets have literally paid me to pass like probably 10 days straight. I've bet them they've paid me. I can't get away from them. Uh, teams are almost are pretty pretty damn even. I do think the Jazz have a slight offensive advantage, um, obviously, um, you know. But then offense and defense versus Nets is pretty even, and the Nets have been playing better. Uh, I'm gonna go with the Nets at home plus the four and a half. It's not my favorite play. Jazz probably get them, but this is more so just to how I feel because they've been paying us every single day. I I need a reason not to bet them, and I just don't have one yet. So. Give me the Nets plus the four and a half chart plus 102 to minus 103 bit of movement towards the Jazz. Good sign if you're back in the Jazz, bad sign if you're back in the Nets. Next game, Lakers, Raptors. Um, This one's also tough. You got, again, two even teams. This is a very, very difficult slate, guys. Almost every game is competitive. Every game's close. The teams are dead even on literally every game. This is like one of the hardest slates we've had. Um, just to be clear, you may want to reduce your unit size tonight. All these teams are so even and similar. Anyways, Lakers on the road to see the Raptors. I, I've i been impressed with the Raptors. Uh, I've also been very impressed with my Lakers. I, I must say, guys, sadly, 
Um, I, I have to fade the Lakers. I'm going to go with the Raptors on the money line. Um, I'm not really a fan of fading the Lakers. They're my favorite team, and they've been good to me. Thing is, I think these two teams are pretty much dead even, but if we just look at the metrics and be honest with ourselves here, Lakers are 11th in scoring, Raptors are 4th in defense. Lakers are 14th in defense, Raptors are 17th in offense. A bigger advantage for the Raptors defense than the Lakers over the offensive counterpart. And the, one of the biggest metrics I measure is the three ball. Lakers are 20th in three. The Raptors allow the least, one of the fewest three points uh, allowed per game. Then the Raptors can shoot the three pretty well and the Lakers can't defend it. I just don't like, I just don't like the spot for the Lakers. I'm going to go with the Raptors at home. Chart plus 105 down to plus 101. It's only four cents, but it's a pretty good sign if you're back in the Raptors, which I am. Okay, guys. Next and final game of the night, Timberwolves versus the Pelicans. Uh, tough one. Tough one again, guys, because frankly, the Pelicans have covered every fucking spread lately. It's ridiculous. This team just continues to cover. They are terrible. They are horrible. And every time I say this, they, they ruin my bet. That said, Timberwolves are bullies. They lose to good teams and they beat the absolute dog shit out of bad teams. I expect the Timberwolves to beat their ass. Bend over. Penetrate. I expect them to get uh beat down. Give me the give me the Timberwolves. I'm gonna lay the points. Eleven and a half. It's massive. Not my favorite play, but this is the one big discrepancy. Now, I have massive offense advantage, massive defense advantage. This three point gap is huge. Field goal percentage gap is huge. Pelicans are terrible, and the Timberwolves they they truly do just bully bad teams. Plus a hundred down to minus one hundred two. Barely any movement. It's moved down two cents. I guess it's a good sign, but it's really stale. Uh, I'm just going with my gut here. I like the Timberwolves to cover the 11 and a half. All right, guys, it's going to be all for me today. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's get out of here. Let's get a bag. Oh, guys, sorry about the NHL video yesterday. I had everything ready to go. So for those of you who I don't know if you guys know yet, I have my sixth baby on the way. Wife is pregnant again. We had our first ultrasound. She's 11, 11 weeks, six days, something like that. So we had an ultrasound yesterday. She told me about it. I knew about it. I was going to record the hockey video when I got home before I had to finish some work. Well, she was excited. And so she didn't schedule it at the normal doctor. That's like 10 minutes away. She scheduled it one that was like 45 minutes away. So we had to drive there. Then we had to do the ultrasound. Then after ultrasound, she does natural birth. So the midwife came in. We had to wait like fucking 45 minutes for her. Then drive home again, 45 minutes. So it ended up taking the whole damn day. So I just, by the time I had wasted like two, three, what not wasted, but spent two, three hours with that. By the time I got back, there was no time to do the video. I apologize, guys. I did have it all ready to go. I'm going to try to do one today. Kind of backed up from yesterday again from just taking so long with that. So we will see. All right. Anyways, guys, let's get out of here. Get it back and crack these folks.